Uh, uh, is it? Button. Nah. Button. Oh. Okay, okay. All right. All right, okay. Good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is, whenever you're watching this. Right now, it's currently, uh, it's currently, it's currently afternoon here in Creation Land. And, and welcome to the second, second, uh, Creation Vlog or Vlog. Um, I kind of wanted to just take a moment and talk about what the Creation Vlog is for. Why in the world am I sitting in front of a camera and talking to myself and the camera and to you? Why am I even doing this? Why, why are we doing this? Um, a few reasons. Number one, I want good information between me, between us here at Creation, Tattoo or Creation Church. I, I want good information available to you at all times. So, you know, you don't have to read. If you don't want to read, you don't have to read a book of stuff. You can click video, watch it, and, and, and then you know what's going on here at Creation. And so, even if you can't be here often, or you live out of state, at least you can kind of feel like you're here with us. You know what I mean? And, and that's really cool. So that's one reason we're doing it. Another reason is like questions, questions, questions. Um, I made a list here, a little, uh, little cheat sheet on my on my powder uh, questions you know um, that, that maybe some of you may have for me um, whether it be just about the tattoo parlor um, our vision and and what what we do here aside from tattooing why we're really here or maybe questions for me you know uh, about the church maybe you have a question about the church um, the ministry what we believe our vision etc I've had some people mm, I've had some people that have asked me what what we're about, what we believe as far as like doctrine or 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 you know what what we really preach even uh, when we have ministry here when we have church services and and what we used to preach before have things changed you know what what we're about I've had people ask me that and so this is this is an opportunity for you the viewer to to watch this and go hey hmm ah what 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 what, what you know uh, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And and it can be everything from spiritual to political. I don't care. Uh, anything that you are curious about, you know, our opinion uh, on a certain matter, then we would love to share that with you. And of course, we're going to use the Word of God to answer all your questions. So, you know, maybe to cut out some obvious questions, if you want to know how we feel about a certain sin or certain things, the answer is simply clearly always in the Word of God, but we would still love to discuss it. So if you have questions, ask it, you know, and, and hopefully um, hopefully we can get some good insights. Um, next thing, next thing I want to talk about, and this is uh, this is the topic for today. This, see that? Look at that. I got this little viewfinder on my camera, and my finger is always backwards. So if, if like, uh, if I point to the right, my finger's on the left, and it always, man, it freaks me out. It's like, what? But uh, it's not about that. It, what it's about right now is July 7th, 2015, Creation Vlog topic of the day is pastoring. It's pastors, you know, and, 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 and some of you don't go to church uh, anymore because of pastors, specifically your pastors, families or whatever, you know, and that, and that is terrible. But, but I want to take a moment and, and, and share with you my heart about... Mm, what a pastor should be. And, and, and you know, the obvious is he's a shepherd, you know, he's a leader, uh, he, he's the man that, you know, obviously preaches the gospel, you know, at church and, and, and during services, but those are all the obvious answers. So a lot of times when people ask me, you know, well, you as a pastor, you know, what, what are you about? What, what are you all about? What do you believe, you know? What, what do you think your role or position is in the ministry or the kingdom of God. And I think the more important question is today for this vlog, what a pastor should not be, should not, like should not. Um, I've got a list here that I've kind of taken notes and uh, the first thing I wrote down was pastors should never be arrogant. Ah, oh, mm, Jesus, I, I have met some pastors, man. I have met some pastors a and you know, I've gone to these conferences and these pastor conferences, and I'll say, hey man, how you doing? You know, whatever, I'm, I pastor a church in Buckner, it's awesome, people are great. 
uh, you know, tell me about yourself. And they'd be like, well, glory to God. You know, it seems like the arrogance kicks in immediately. You know, you can always tell when a pastor's being arrogant, when they get that, that, that it's just like this face. It's like a face that you just want to look at momentarily, punch 17 times, and then, oh, hold that thought. Got to hey, Kevin, what's up? Uh, oh, pardon me, pardon, pardon, pardon me, excuse me. <sighs> okay, so where were we pastors, not being arrogant, etc. Well, anyways, I met a pastor one time, not gonna say his name, but I was at a convention, and that's where I was. Yes, I was at the convention, and I'm just like, hey, I'm Ian, etc. I got a church, it's great, whatever. You know, just, just conversation. And the first thing he tells me is, well, you know, my church, we, we have, I mean, at the lowest, 5,000, yes. 5,000 people come to my church. First of all, not your church. It's the church of the living God. We, as the body, make up the church. So, mm, not your church. Uh, and you know, sometimes people just say that. They're like, oh, at my church, wherever. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, he, he was like taking some sort of ownership. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, my church and my people and my congregation. You know, and, and, and nothing wrong with bigger churches, man. We're going to grow and be massive someday and have tons of people saved and delivered and jumping around like crazy for God. So that's amazing. But the first thing he says, he doesn't say like, you know what, my church is awesome. The people are amazing. He does not 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 go to the people and how great the body of Christ is in his church. The first thing he tells me is, is well, at minimum 5,000, and but most services are about 7,000. <laughs> you know, and there's just such this, ah, this arrogance, arrogance. And, and I know it's not right. And I, you know, I remember thinking, I'll just throat punch this guy and then he can't talk. And then yeah. that arrogance will stop. But I know, I know I'm not supposed to do that. But the temptation to just be like, oh, no kidding, five things, yeah, yeah, right in the frickin', you know, right that, that guy, you know, and Adam right there. Just, just give Adam a little tap, man. That, that, that's the temptation I had because I'm so tired of pastors being what they're not, not supposed to be and being this arrogant, uh, what's the word? I'm going to use a dick. The, 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 uh, I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but it's true. It, it, it is such a dick move to sit there or stand there and brag about how you have thousands of people who follow you and your ministry and your, your, yours, whatever. It's just, it just, that's what the, a pastor um, or evangelist even, or anybody that's in a leadership position in church should not, 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 not be like. So don't be arrogant. And if you're a pastor and you're watching this and we know each other personally and you're an arrogant, I don't know, dick, stop it. Quit it. Because, you know, before long, it's just a message to all my friends in ministry, which I have very few because I'm extremely outspoken and I believe that the Bible says if you have a problem, you just go to somebody. So I've gone to many, many people and said, hey, I have an issue. And they're like, Ugh, get it. go away, you sinner. They, they don't even acknowledge me as a pastor. That's okay. It really is okay. But let me tell you, if you're watching right now and you're a pastor and you're an arrogant jerk face, and your Adam's apple needs punched many, 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 many times, let me just tell you to quit. Because before long, before you know it, all your glory, your glory, and all your, your success that you created, you see, God, God is a God of justice. I promise you that. And God will come into your ministry and he will remove, like, like what? Gone, like he will remove people who are there in sincerity, who are actually there for the right reasons. See, the Holy Spirit has a way of communicating with us. In other words, the Holy Spirit sometimes will tell you, bounce. Like, have you ever been to a church and maybe you start getting involved, you're there for, I don't know, however many days or months or however long you're there, and the Holy Spirit's like, mm, gotta go. Like, it just, you know that you know you love the church, you love the people there, but there's something about the leadership that's shady, and you know that if you continue to be a part of that, then you're gonna become either like that, you're gonna like become the jerk, you know, like with the jerk, like holding hands with the jerk, eating ice cream maybe with the jerk. Hold that thought, mm, be right back. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, I'm actually open right now. The shop's open so people come in, you know, whatever. 
Where was I? Oh, so these pastors, arrogant pastors that are just eh, not so great and uh, they think they're awesome. What I was trying to say is God will actually remove people. We got to that a little bit. God will remove people. So, so to you pastors that think that uh, you're the bomb.com or whatever it is, I aim to tell you if you keep that arrogant attitude, what's going to happen is like your children's pastors are going to be like, like gone. They're gonna say, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I cannot follow that attitude. And then what happens when you're on a youth pastor? You go, oh, we'll find somebody else. But then see, there's a need. And then who suffers is the teenagers who've built relationships with those sincere pastors, with those people who are leading that youth group. Uh, 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 the, the children, if you will, or the teenagers. I know teenagers hate it when you call them children. And I already know if you're watching this right now and you're like 16, you're gonna be like, I'm not a child. I'm sorry. I'm just saying the youth that have developed relationships with that youth pastor, just like, man, it's, it's gonna be very hard for those youth to trust other people anymore. Because see, what happens is, especially kids, teenagers, whatever, you get a youth pastor, man, he's great, a youth pastor his wife, they're doing an awesome ministry. And then the pastor ends up being some dirtbag who just thinks he's awesome. And the youth pastors get tired of that, thinking that he's so awesome, and they leave. The, the kids, sorry, the youth, they suffer. And so think about that right now. I mean, as you're listening to this, if you're a pastor, really take this to heart. Man, I mean, I know that you don't like me. I know, I know that local churches don't care for me. They're like always oh, tattooed and blah, blah, blah. And we've heard the rumors. Get past that and understand that God has ordained you to lead your church and make sure that people underneath you are respected and loved and they don't see a jerk standing up there preaching. They don't see a guy that acts like he's great when he preaches. And then when you have your board meetings, that's a whole nother vlog, oh Jesus, boards. Mm. But when you have your board meetings or leadership meetings or whatever, you know, they see another guy. They don't need to see two different people. What they need to see is Jesus Christ through you every single time. So again, arrogant pastors, you gotta go. You gotta quit it. You gotta stop, man. You just have to stop. And if you can't help yourself, go into acting. Do what everybody else does, you know? Give up on the whole ministry thing because it's really apparently not in your heart to please God. You're trying to please yourself. And just go do something, you know, in the world so we don't have to look at you anymore. That would be ideal. That, that, that would be ideal. But but that's my, my opinion on arrogant pastors. Uh, what's gonna happen, just think about this. What's gonna happen if your children's church or your nursery, God forbid, your nursery ministry people, the people that are in there changing diapers and chucking poo. What about those people? What about the children's church uh, leaders or pastors? What happens when they all leave? What are you going to do, man? I mean, seriously, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, so think about that. Your attitude as a pastor affects the entire body. You're supposed to be a leader, but you're not supposed to be a leader that thrives on power, personal power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables you to preach in the first place. Don't you ever forget that. If you're preaching and you think it's because you're some great public speaker, or you just say, well, God's just given me a, a gift with words, quit it. God did not give you a gift with words, the anointing when it comes upon you, just like in the book of Acts, when that anointing comes on you, that, that is when you have the power to preach the gospel and to reach into people's hearts and not their minds. So think about that. Uh, uh, I gotta move on. I, I'm just rambling, rambling. We're like probably 80 minutes in this thing. I have no idea. That's an exaggeration, but still. Uh, n second thing, number two, pastors should not, 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 not be put on a pedestal. And that kind of comes with arrogance, but then again, sometimes this is the body's fault. This is the believer's fault. Sometimes it's not the pastor's fault. Sometimes the pastor is a humble man and truly loves his church, loves his people, and is doing what God's called him to do. But then, excuse me, got this, ah, mm, there's like a, there's like a, my whole face. It's, um, anyways. Uh, pedestals, man. Pastors cannot be put on a pedestal. You are no better than anybody else. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. We, the body of Christ, are all one unit. We're all people. We're all human, homo sapien, however you want to say that. Homo sapiens coming together, if you will, to worship God, to to teach about God, to to receive. Uh, the word of God into our hearts, even pastors. So sometimes the church, the people are like, oh, it's the pastor. 
I see this all the time, man, with like evangelists. Oh, and, and you'll hear somebody say, oh, that was a great service, you know, the other night or whatever. But were you there when so-and-so came and preached? Oh, Jesus. Listen, 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 listen. It's not about the man or the woman or the people teaching or, 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 or preaching. It's not about them. Okay, so pastors and leadership are not meant to be here and the body here. It, it, it is, it's, it's an equilibrium kind of thing. It, it, it all flows together. It takes all kinds. It takes from every person to, to the smallest, tiniest little baby to the biggest, whatever, tallest dude or woman or person or whatever. It takes all people in the body of Christ to accomplish what the church is supposed to be, which is a place of fellowship, learning, discipline, etc., etc. It's for a whole nother vlog, but pastors should not be put on a pedestal. I I've had people come to me and say, wow, you you're a great, you're a great preacher. And I say, not me, not me. Believe it, man. I mean, come on. <sighs> you know, I mean, for those of you who really, really know me, you know that it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit inside of me that enables me to preach. Uh, I, I've told people this before, without the anointing, mm, I, I would not not be a good public speaker. I mean, look at this video, it's everywhere, it's all over the place, I'm randomly itching my face. I mean, that is not good public speaking. I would never make it on the news, because randomly I would just be like, oh, or I don't know, I'd make some stupid noise, or or, or I would fart, you know, I mean, we're all human, right? And, and, and they would say, oh, you can't do that, that's not professional. I, I wouldn't cut it in the, uh, you know, the uh, specifics of public speaking, but when God does does enable me, when he when he opens my mouth, when when he opens my heart, and and I read and receive from the Bible, and then I preach it with him, with his anointing, that's when when I'm actually able to preach. So when people come to me and they're like, my gosh, I heard you preach, man, and I'm like, stop it, quit it, no, take your eyes off of me and look at Jesus. It's not me. I'm just the tool. I'm the instrument. I'm the horse that Jesus you know, rode on in the town preached. I'm just, I'm just the, I'm the vehicle, if you will, you know? Mm. I just picture myself as a horse. It was just, I, it's a, uh, mm. Next, next thing that pastors should not, 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 not be, is treated any different. Now this is kind of with the pedestal, but I want to give a small example. For example, have you ever noticed how uh, you can go to a church, any church, and sometimes, you know, you might have a couple people greet you or talk to you or whatever. Um, which within 10 minutes of being there, you should have been greeted or talked to. If you go to a church and you walk in and nobody says a word to you, don't go back. But what a waste of time. I mean, the, the concept of community in, in, in Jesus Christ, the concept of fellowship certainly does not exclude conversation. So if you go to a church and, and you were like, ah, nobody ever talked to me, nobody greeted me, just bounce. You know, keep looking. If you don't come here, go to another church. Find your niche. Find Find a church where pastors aren't treated any different than 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 the deacons or deacons. God, what is a deacon anyways? I mean, I, I, yeah, okay. Anyways, different vlog. That's another thing. We'll get to that soon. If you guys want, let me know if you want in the comments or whatever below. Tell me if, if, if uh, you want me to kind of dig deeper into the roles and responsibilities of the church. Because it's very simple, actually. It's, 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 uh, uh ridiculously simple what a church should be, how it's supposed to be structured. I believe in structure, but I also don't believe that it should be complicated, like with certain titles or whatever. You know what I mean? Like if people walk up to me and they're like, hey Ian, I'm like, hey, I like that. You know what I mean? Like when sometimes when people are like, hey pastor, I'm like, hey, hey, that's cool. It's an it's it's a humbling and and, and incredibly uh uh gratifying thing for me if somebody calls me a pastor it goes wow god god's using me in that position but but i don't ever want to be uh in the position where if somebody calls me a pastor that that they're not seeing jesus but they're seeing a man that bothers me that 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 the idea of them not seeing the lord bothers me so but anyways pastors should not be what i say treated any different any different in other words you know sometimes pastors get done preaching and, and people like gravitate whew, like to the to to the pastor and they're like, oh pastor, oh pastor, glory to God. That, that's cool, you know. But why wouldn't we gravitate and really focus our 
conversation and our efforts to talk to people at the church that maybe, just maybe, uh, sit there and don't say a word. Think about it. If somebody shows up to a church and you try to greet them and they're really quiet and they go through the service and then afterwards they're not saying anything, they're not talking to somebody, there's a chance, there's a chance they either have questions about the church or maybe they're just really in need of conversation but they're afraid to start conversation on their own. And so I think that, you know, if you're willing to run up to the pastor and be like, oh, pastor, blah, 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 be willing to focus that same energy on everybody in the church, the whole body of Christ. So no matter who they are in the church, be willing to gravitate your intentions and thoughts and your concerns on everybody in the body. Is that, is that, is that, is that there? Are you, are you there with me? Because I'm there and I, I may not even be explaining this good, but hopefully I am. Um, I did write down this and I think this is absolutely necessary. What pastors should be because we started what pastors should be, and I think we focused on what pastors shouldn't be, which I think is important. What pastors should be. Pastors should be a friend, man. Like a friend. If your pastor is willing to like smile and act holy in front of you at the church and be like, oh, glory to God, it's so great to see you. But then when you really need him or you know you have an issue and you reach out, you show up to his house or you call and you say, pastor, my God, man, I need your help. I need you to pray with me. Something is going on. He's like, well, glory to God, just, just call my secretary. I mean, this happens, man. Pastors say, you know what, call my secretary. And, and, and if I have time, then, you know, maybe maybe I can try to help you, you know, glory to God, you know, I, ah, that drives me crazy. You know, pastors should, should have the fruits of the Spirit, should, should exemplify everything that the Bible defines as a righteous man, a, a man that is truly a man after God's own heart. That's what a pastor should be. They should be nice. Have you ever, think about this, have you ever met a pastor that was just a freaking jerk? They preach, and then you meet them, and they're like, I have you ever met that? I've met them guys, and I'm like, who does this guy think he is? I mean, seriously, man. Ah, mmm. I'm just, I'm gonna, I gotta move on. I have to because I'm gonna rant and rant, which is part of this vlog, and those of you who know me, I, I rant, pardon me, mmm, a little bit right there. I haven't ate yet. I got like this gas thing going. It's weird, uh, but it's coming, you know. So anyways, uh, pastors should have the fruits of the Spirit. That's what I was trying to get to. And I want to wrap this vlog up with that. And I want to go to the Word of God. And let's just read it together. Um, you don't have to read it right now if you don't want to pull your Bible out. Or maybe you just want to jot it down, like -a -down, the reference. And then and study these passages. Look at them. Uh, uh, and maybe see if this really blesses you. Because I think it will bless you like it's blessed me this morning, afternoon, today, whatever. So so go to, go to Galatians. Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And it's just a couple of scriptures here. I'm going to read out of the Amplified because I like how it expounds on, like the King James will say, you know, but the fruit of the Spirit is. The, 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 the Amplified kind of expounds, expands a little more in depth on, on what the scripture is saying. So if you've never read the Amplified Bible, holy Moses, read it, check it out. It's really good. Uh, and it starts with verse 22 here, and I'm just going to read this. It says, But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes is, number one, the first thing is love. You notice that. The first thing is love. If your pastor got no love for you, he, he, he does not not have the fruit of the Spirit in his life. You cannot say that a leader in a church lives and operates according to the Word of God if they don't exemplify love. Seriously, now we're all guilty of having bad days, bad mornings, whatever, and we're all guilty of maybe talking to people at times and we're just mm, having a tough time, whatever, and somebody's like, hey, and you're just like, hey. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of love there, but we all are human. Paul said that we all struggle, we all fall short. So I'm not saying that if your pastor isn't always like, oh, I love you, you know, that, that you should you should condemn him for that or whatever. I'm just saying the first thing that Paul said here in Galatians is the fruit of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit is love and gladness. You know, the, the word love does translate to the word gladness. In other words, that person has gladness on them. You ever met somebody, they're just, man, they're glad, like they're thankful and, and they're just happy. If your pastor seems like he's not happy, 
And, and he is not, not, not in a good mood 90% of the time. Chances are the fruits of the Spirit or the Word of God really isn't in his heart. Because you can't be a leader in a church and be a grump all the time. It doesn't work. You can try it, but people are going to start seeing through it. The devil works through hate, not God. Understand that. So, so the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, gladness, peace. That's kind of a given. Patience. Mm, this is huge. Pastors, if you're listening, seriously take this to heart. Stop preaching this scripture, this verse. Stop going to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 and, and preaching it and telling everybody else they should have it, but not having the same attributes in your life. Don't be a hypocrite. Seriously, nobody likes a hypocrite. Throat punching coming. Bam. Like, it's coming. You know, it's coming. Okay, it's not coming. Forgive me, Lord. But <laughs> peace, patience. If your pastor is not a patient guy, well... Mm, enough said. I mean, you have to be patient to be in the ministry because sometimes people will push you, man. I, I myself have had people that will just challenge me. Really? Really? This is like this, ah, I don't know what it is. It's a, uh, mm. But, you know, I've had people that, that will just challenge me. You know what I mean? And not challenge me like, hey, what's the Bible say about this? Or what do you think about that? But they will just try to get under my skin. And, and pastors, you have to be patient. Because you know what? We all grow at different levels and different, you know, not everybody gets saved one day and lives according to the absolute whole truth and word of God. The next. Some people, like all of us, including myself, takes our entire lifetime of effort and of dedication to making, making a conscientious decision to serve God. So pastors, be patient. Please be patient. And then it goes on to say in the Amplified, with an even temper and forbearance. In other words, I've seen pastors get mad. Mad. I mean, especially at conferences. It's sad. I'm going to secretly start recording conferences now that I've said that. If any pastor sees us, they're like, go, don't invite him. But, you know, to these pastors' conferences, I'm going to start recording conversations. I have heard pastors literally, with temper, with no patience and no love, sit at these conferences and just gossip about their people. Say, oh, God, I got this one lady in my church. Oh, Jesus. If she'd leave, my God, that'd be great, because when she sings, it just sounds like a dead cat. And that's, that's just an example. But I have heard these things. I have heard the anger and, and the lack of patience and the lack of love in pastors at conferences. And I'm going, oh my Jesus, like, are these dudes for real? But then they'll go back to their churches and be like, hey, you know, mm, mm. I'm moving on. Uh, still in verse 22 here. The next thing is kindness, which goes a lot with love, joy, patience, obviously. All these things work together. Goodness, benevolence. Mm, I love that word, benevolence. Just rolls off the tongue, man. But, but benevolence in itself, okay? Goodness. In other words, good intentions. Real, wholehearted intentions. As a pastor, that person is so has every intention of doing what God wants for the body of Christ. That is a fruit of the spirit that all pastors should have, benevolence. Um, next one, faithfulness. This is, this is a given. I mean, seriously, like, it goes along with, you know, if you're a pastor and you, and, and, and you have a church and, and something happens to somebody in your church, like maybe somebody gets arrested or they go to jail. You know, whatever, they make a mistake. Instead of getting up there at your pulpit and going, these idiots did this, don't be like that. You should say, hey guys, we gotta pray right now, man. And we gotta really believe God that this person in our body, in our, our arena of fellowship here, just made a mistake. They're getting ready to go to jail. Let's pray for them. And not only that, let's put a group of people together. Let's go visit them. Let's take them stuff, you know, and bless them and remind them that the body of Christ is simply the body. And if one member suffers, Paul said this, I can't go there. I'm, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> thank God for the anointing. I'm going to tell you right now, Paul said if one member suffers, one member, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 12. I'd have to look it up. Pretty certain. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Whatever. You know, uh, and that's another thing. Pastors and the arrogance, you know, if they misquote something, they're like, you know, people just nail them to the cross for quit it, people. I mean, people make mistakes. I'm pretty sure it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I believe, I believe, and I know for certain that Paul did say this, if one member suffers, all the members suffer. In other words, if one person is hurting in your ministry, 
in your group or fellowship of people and there's not a faithful pastor and a faithful leadership team and a, and a group of people, if, not, if, if everyone isn't faithful to go surround that person who made that mistake with love and kindness and patience and forbearance, if that isn't present in a ministry, then that person feels secluded and what happens is, is they end up separating from God. They say, forget it, man. You know, those people weren't there for me, and that pastor wasn't there for me. Even in the hardest time of my life, and I made this stupid mistake, that pastor wasn't there for me, so apparently God doesn't exist. People think like this. If you don't believe me, then, then, then just think about it. Truly think about it. People rely so much on what they see instead of what they don't see, which is the whole concept of faith. But people rely so much on what they see. And if they see a pastor that looks at somebody with shame for making a mistake instead of going to them and saying, come here, come on. I used to do this to Richie. Richie, if you're watching this, it's still right here, man. It's right here. This, this right here is the bosom. And this bosom is open. Open. And I used to do that to Richie all the time. Richie would say something and he'd be like, oh, God. I'd say, Richie, come here. Come to the bosom. And he'd lay his head in my bosom. I just, I just love on him and pray for him. And, and, and people say, well, man, that's weird. You know, whatever. I don't care if it's weird. I mean, you know, John did it. And I mean, to Jesus, it may seem weird, but let me tell you something. It's love. That's what it is. So let's move on to verse 22, uh, no, excuse me, 23, and we'll wrap this up. The next thing it says after uh, patience and kindness, goodness, and uh, faithfulness is gentleness, meekness, humility. Mm. Pastors, again, don't be a jerk. If you're cocky, no one likes you. If you're super cocky, a lot more people don't like you. And if you're super, super cocky, you get throat punched. Seriously, think about it. Do you like your throat? Do you want to keep your throat intact? That's a serious question. Meekness, humility, self-control, obvious. If you're a pastor that does not have self-control, flies off the handle, or quickly judges you, bounce. Find a new church, find a place where your pastor goes, mm, been there, done that, or maybe haven't been there, done that, but I've made mistakes, come here and let me love on you. Come to the bosom, that's where you wanna be. Uh, Self-restraint, continuance, against such things there is no law that can bring a charge. I love it, I love it, I love this passage. I love what Paul is saying here. In other words, what he's saying is, I mean, look at Paul, my God. I mean, the guy, the guy, the guy, was, was just, just awful before he really got to know the Lord. I mean, he, he was just awful. And, 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 and you know, a lot of us have been awful before. But the awesome thing is when, when, when Jesus Christ, when, when the Messiah, when God the Father reached inside his heart and said, it's time for a change. And he accepted that change. His whole life changed, man. Everything changed. It was just incredible. So, so, so when I read stuff that Paul wrote in the New Testament, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, there's so much more than that, you know, to practically two-thirds, I think, or, a, you know, a very generous amount of the New Testament, Paul the Apostle wrote, I take it so much to heart, not, not, not that I don't take the other parts of the Bible to heart, but it speaks to me so much because I know how real it is coming from a guy that went from a guy that hated any thought of, of worshiping God to a guy that literally went to preaching the gospel, which is, this is my story actually. So it's really incredible. I relate a lot to this, but. So this is the vlog um, for uh, July 10th. Is it the 10th, 9th? I don't know. Uh, 10th, 7th, 7th. I think I said 7th earlier. Well, anyways, it's the 10th now, so three days have passed since you've watched this. That just goes to show you how, when you're having fun, time just, you know, it flies. But uh, July 10th, uh, creation vlog. If you have questions, comments, concerns, if you disagree with me, awesome, comment below. Let me know what you think. I want to continue to do this vlog. I think it's fun. I think it's a great idea. For us to connect online instead of just in person, I believe there's fellowship online and it is possible. I know the devil intends for Facebook and every other social media site to destroy people, but I aim to tell you God will take what the devil meant for harm and use it for such a wonderful purpose. So let's do that. Let's, let's use social media and let's use these sites to uh, have this vlog or have fellowship and let's, let's piss off the devil by giving God glory. Amen. So, so, so that's, that's, that's where I'm at today. That's what the vlog is about. Again, if you have questions, um, I don't care what it's about. I've actually had people ask me, what is your position on the gay marriage thing? What is your position on the rebel flag thing? And, and I see it all over Facebook. And you know, God has not instructed me to make a video about my position, but I'm pretty sure as the rest of you ought to already know, I, th I think it's funny, churches are voting, did you know that? I found this out. 
And one specific church, which is funny, it's a local church, they voted. They said, okay guys, let's vote, man. Let us vote and let's decide if gays should be allowed to be married in our church. I, I'm pretty certain that if God ordained you and, 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 and told you to have a ministry in that church that you should already know the answer to that. I don't think a vote is necessary. I think the word of God is the word of God and it will always be the word of God. And whether you like it or dislike it or agree with it or don't agree with it, that doesn't change the fact that it truly is the word of God. And that's where my heart is. So again, comments, questions, whatever, please let me know. And as always, we love you here, man. We, we love you at Creation Church. Like Creation Tattoo, Creation Church, Josh and I, we, we love you guys. And, and, and when you come and visit and hang out, whether you're getting tattooed or come to the church, whatever that is, we love that. And, and, and we're so grateful that we have such a good group of people a good group of friends that come and support our heart, you know, for what we wanted to, and we're grateful. And so, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for all the patrons, for the people that come to the tattoo parlor that get tattooed. That's awesome. That's how we feed our family, you know. That's how we pay our bills, so thank you. And for those of you that have supported the ministry and already support the ministry and are continuing to support the ministry, even financially or through prayer or through just coming and helping, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I, will, I will be doing another vlog here soon and giving you more details as to the, the launch date of when we're gonna start having services again at Creation Church. So, so be, be uh, stay tuned, you know, stay tuned. And, uh, and we'll see you next time and hopefully see you soon. We love you. Oh, oh, sweet, sweet, oh, sweet. Look at that, just look at it. Oh, I need to stretch, it's, oh, it's right there. There it is. That's the one. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Ugh. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. It's still going. It's still. Oh, that's awesome. I'll just edit that out. Or I'll keep it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.